What's going on everyone, Drew here. Today we're gonna to talk about how to get the best image from your iPad photo booth. I hear this question at least two to three times a day. People are concerned about the iPad and how good can the photos possibly be? Well, first off, let's talk about what's possible with you subscribing. If you're not already subscribed, you guys, do me a favor, hit subscribe, hit like on this video if you found it interesting, and in the comments, let me know what you think. So, let's just talk about it, right? A few ways you're gonna need to get the best image for your iPad photo booth. Number one, lighting. Lighting, lighting, lighting. You guys, it's important, you know? You gotta remember, you're using the front-facing camera on an iPad, right? This device isn't made for photos. Yes, it does take photos, but with poor light, your images will be the worst. They, you have to make sure your shell provides a good light, and if you even wanna take it up a notch, add additional lighting, so that's very important. But I wanted to focus on camera settings. If you didn't know, your photo booth software should allow you to go onto the iPad on the app and adjust the settings. That's called manual settings. So for, uh, for Luma Booth, for example, let me hop over here. You guys literally go to the drop down menu and to the bottom left, camera settings. So right now you'll see everything is, is set to automatic, but you can toggle it right here and you can adjust the settings you know the shutter speed, you can lower it, raise it, vice versa, just like that. And same thing with the, um, the white balance, the temperature, the tint, and so on. So I just wanted to, to tell you guys, I'm not gonna get into depth about how to manually adjust this because each event is different. You know, my event, if I'm doing an event in here, my camera settings, if I'm doing it manually, are gonna be different from wherever you're at. So you have to learn the basics of photography. You have to research what shutter speed means, what ISO means, kind of understand white balances. And this is very, very important because you have to know what it does because if you're just playing with the settings and you're just messing the numbers around, it, it, it's a little bit more into that. So I'm gonna leave in the description a link to a video. You should be able to understand a little bit more what these settings mean. And let's just talk about when would you not use manual settings, right? Because there's automatic settings, there's manual settings. Well, for the iPad photo booth, if you're doing a drop off or you're not next to the photo booth, 100% make sure you leave it to automatic. Reason being is, you guys, look, if the light changes in this venue, like in this room, let's just say I have everything set to manual. If I leave and the lights turn off, the photos won't have enough light and it's not going to auto adjust because it's on manual. And the same thing goes if you're in a dark room, then they turn the lights on. Everything's going to be not the way you want it to be. So make sure you, uh, make sure you, you're aware of that. So if you're not there automatic, but you know, I'm not saying that you can't get great photos in automatic. You just, again, you have to make sure the light and another thing you guys, I don't think anyone ever talks about, Having your photo booth closer to the backdrop, the better. The closer it is, the better, because that's less distance that the light has to travel to get there. And with iPad photo booths, you know, you're not using a flash, you're using a constant light, whether it's a LED or a softbox or some bar lights. You know, the light that you have is what you have. It's not, the flash, there's no flash where it, you know, it can travel far distance. So I always recommend keeping your photo booth closer to the backdrop. And I know a problem with having it close, that means that less, uh, you can't have larger groups in a photo. But my answer to that, and just really take a second to think about it, right? Why are you gonna put your photo booth further back for group photos when most of the photos taken are usually two to three people? Don't set up your photo booth for the rare occasion with a big group, right? It, the way you, you basically wanna set it up for the majority, not for the minority. So that's really important. And my wife, I'm so glad I remember this, she said, hey, make sure you talk about cleaning the lens on the camera. This is something I do all the time. Sometimes in a hurry, I'm touching the iPad and I forget that the camera's not clean. If I have a little bit of smudge on my finger, right, that could distort and, and, and really create a soft, kind of weird looking image. So make sure you clean your camera in the description um, you'll see some links to some products. We have some screen cleaner that we use. We buy it from Amazon. Every time before we leave the event, everything's set up, we spray it, we wipe it down, good to go. So these are just a few ways you can get the best image possible. And you guys, 
don't get stressed out. If you don't know photography, you can run your photo booth on automatic, but if we're talking about getting the best picture possible, manual settings, you would usually use manual settings if you have to stay, usually for print events and maybe the rare occasion where you have to be there, then manual settings. But automatic will work just fine. And again, do not get discouraged because iPads won't take um, DSLR quality photos. You know, I run into a lot of people that make that such a big deal. They don't think about the benefits of iPad photo booths. They don't think about the simplicity. They don't think about how affordable. They don't think about how portable. Look at this party booth right here. This thing is super light when it comes to like, you know, the big picture of photo booths. Like this versus a mirror booth or a 360 booth, this is so much easier to haul around. So there are definitely way more positives than there are negatives for the iPad photo booths. And I think one of the main negatives would be image quality. So I hope this video helped with that negative and I hope you guys kind of have a better understanding of how to take a solid photo with this. And again, link to that video, um, little photography 101 uh, video. I didn't make it, but it's down there for you. So I'm gonna sign off here, but if you are interested in getting started with the photo booth business and you want an iPad photo booth, photobooth101.com, my company, we sell photo booths, we sell backdrops, props, um, also included with the uh, photo booth purchase is our private group chat filled with other photo booth entrepreneurs. A lot of learning to be done there, a lot of encouragement, a lot of networking, a lot of stuff going down there and sample contracts, booking forms, all that will be included. So I hope this video helped. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care.